Hello. Today we're speaking with Susan Walker, a local artist living in Issaquah, Washington. She's part of our current show Over, Under, and Through here at Bainbridge Arts and Crafts. I am Deborah Rosinski, the Executive Director of Bainbridge Arts and Crafts, and I'd like to welcome you all to this talk. Susan, it's, it's so great to meet you and to get to know about your work. Can you share some details about your background and education and influences? Well, I had the privilege to study um, with at UC Davis when their art department there was uh, phenomenal. So my undergraduate um, bachelor's is in studio art from UC Davis. And I was there at the time when the faculty included um, Robert Arneson, uh, William Wiley, Roar de Forest, and, and my favorite was Wayne Tebow. He's the one that I glommed onto and studied with side by side for three years. So he's my main influence as far as my schooling went. I have since gone on and done two years at the University of Washington and um, met some other mentors uh, that I'm still in contact with today as, as uh, part of an art critique group and as I said, mentors. So I've, I've had a lot of good instruction over the years. Let's talk about some of the processes that you're using in your work. To start with, what inspires you to come up with certain imagery? Sort of my tagline for a while was capturing a moment because that's what I felt like was there's this going about my everyday life, taking a camera with me everywhere I go. There was just, there was something that captured my imagination that I thought I could paint or wanted to paint. Uh, often has architectural elements and or captures a feeling or mood. And while because of my academic training, I can, I can, I can draw really well, I found that using a photo reference basically was an efficiency and saved me time um, and also gave me the liberty to be creative beyond the photo. I understand you have a nice partnership with um, Tony Pinto, is that right? And, um, and she helps you kind of take the photography tool further with processes uh, you use. Yeah, she, about that? she is a, well, she's a professional photographer and has been for 20 plus years. And we work side by side together in Gilman Village, which is a, a series of shops and restaurants and for us, that's where our studio was uh, in a farmhouse built in 1889. We had a big old farmhouse that we shared with several other artists and they rotated in and out over the course of the eight years we were there. But Tony and I just became the anchors and we came to rely on each other for advice or just, you know, good conversation over a glass of wine at the end of a work day. But she is a Photoshop genius. And I was unaware of what Photoshop really could do or does. And it actually has an intelligence built into the program where she can take a photograph that I have certain elements that I want highlighted, brought forward, pushed back, um, shrunk. And she can manage all of that in a way that gives me sort of a raw image of composition of what I want to work with. So we've been doing that. We each have our own studio now um, and don't work side by side, but I, I see her very often. And she not only photographs finished work, but she helps me create the composition that I want initially. Okay. So it's really really fun to work together yeah do you have a certain mindset or are you conscious of the ways that you use color or does it come from the original source material and then um, you go from there uh, I would say that it's a it might start with the reference to the photo but that's an area um, once the composition Tony and I have created the composition then it's uh, really up to me to put color and really shape starts to drive. I, I might look at something like 
uh, what area is going to have a lot of detail and what area is going to need a lot of negative space. So even if there's detail in the photo, I can with color and with shape just block out in my mind and then put that to canvas to the, I don't know whether it's a feeling I'm trying to catch or if it's just strictly technical at, at some level as far as putting putting something together that is very aesthetically pleasing, but I can take great liberties with the, the color and the, like I say, it's the, the shape and the line and the level of detail. I mix um, all my own colors and I have on the wall of my studio, I have swatches and I have swatches on board that are all over the floor that I'm just constantly mixing um, from, you know, little tubes of $30 each paint, because I buy really expensive paint. Um, I'm mixing, you know, sometimes four or five, seven little squishes from different tubes to get the color that I want. So that part is really fun. I love that. And so I would say with, with color and with shape, it's the, the painting itself starts to inform me where where we the painting and I are going to go next <laughs> so the painting is your partner in it. <laughs> um what are you thinking about in terms of the way that ways that you apply the paint um like are you thinking about an overall texture that you want to have or to eliminate or maybe it's different in different situations well my Patrick LaCicero, who's, as I said, my main mentor still um, locally, is just absolutely, you've got to put more paint on the canvas. He still says that to me today, put more paint on. And he just hates it. If you can see any of the weave of the canvas coming through in any of his work, but that's just not, I'm just not me or I'm not there yet. Um, so I have a much lighter touch um, than he does in terms of texture. And when I use a palette knife and really gob it on, I'll often take my fingers then and, and work with my fingers as well. But I would say, you know, I have a lighter touch than, than the average as far as texture and, and, and thickness of paint than the average art that I'm aware of. Even the works that I see of the masters, because I love to go to art galleries and see the work of, um, you know, the really great painters. And yeah, I would say I have a, a little bit lighter touch. I also want to ask you about how you make the choices for framing your compositions. Um, you're, you're working with drone photographers. Can you speak to that a bit? Oh, yeah. I, I'm really... I mean, the paintings that are in the show there are just some of my favorite because of that unique perspective. And they're, they're three drone pilots that I work with and they're all FAA certified. So they all understand the, the rules in terms of, you know, drones can often be suspiciously intrusive um, for people that don't know very much about, um, at least the pilots I work with, they're very conscious of um, the legal issues of airspace and so forth. So I, I trust that because I'm a rule follower. And, um, but the, one of the paintings that the, that's in the show, I bought that image from the drone pilot, Lionel Flynn, where it's right over the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, bird's eye view. And I bought that image from him. The other drone pilot I work with is Jamie Quick, who's right there on the island. And he, um, he and I traveled to Kansas together. He was able to, one of the paintings there is of a barn that he flew the drone over and um, was able to go bird's eye down on, the, on this big old abandoned barn. That was so cool. And I was right over Jamie's shoulder going, no, yeah, no, little over. It, it. So I was coaching him. And that was a really fun experience too um, until the vultures started <laughs> dive bombing the drone and he had to pull it down. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Can I ask you, um, the image that you purchased, was that for the Red Car Travels On painting? Yeah. 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 I mean, that painting has a dizzying perspective to it. 
It's really quite an amazing point of view. I like collaborating. That's what I liked about working with Tony, and that's what I like work, working with Jim and Kim, the other drone pilot, and with Lionel. Is I just I'm I'm finding really I really thrive on that collaboration because so much time is spent alone in my studio, which I also really savor that that time. But it's it's really fun to collaborate. I want to get back to some of the other paintings in the show. Um, can you tell me a little more of the backstory behind trains? Yeah, that is a, an image that um, is part of Jamie Quick's demo reel for his PR firm. And I was just looking at, you know, his intro video and I said, can, can, I, can, 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 can I get that just a still of that, please? I just love that. So that is something that I acquired off of um, footage that he'd shot for something else. He he has a PR company where he, he ends up traveling to some unusual places um, in the United States. And so um, he, you know, I grabbed that. I don't even know where that is. The water is on Bainbridge somewhere. Well, uh -huh. yeah, that is. I, I don't know where, but that's, he said, no, but that's from Bainbridge. I could actually find out and tell you where that one was <laughs> because one of my staff members looked at that painting and realized it was practically in her backyard. It's like very close to where she lives. <laughs> it's a small world on the island. <laughs> um, tell us about the neighborhood. How, how did that pain, painting come that to you? another one that Jamie Quick took and just thought I'd be interested in. And so he knows my eye um, and he just kind of has the ability to, you know, send me some images when he thinks they might work. And I just, oh, I love that painting. That was so fun to paint. I mean, they all are, but that one super fun and super challenging to get enough of the perspective and the roof lines lined up and then to just make the background in the distance, you know, really soften those lines and gray up the horizon line. So it really fell back and then really punch the detail in the front mm -hmm. with the car, the, the lines in the street. And um, yeah, that was, that was challenging. That's a big painting. I'm very drawn to that one. I, I feel like I want to be in that space. <laughs> but, but I feel that about many of your pieces. They just, they really are striking and kind of a unique vision that you have. Well, um, I'm thrilled to have the show at um, Bainbridge Arts and Crafts. I'm just, just so excited. <laughs> Be sure not to miss Over, Under, and Through, Three Artists, Three Perspectives, featuring artists Aaron Haldane, Susan E. Walker, and Judith Zugish at Bainbridge Arts and Crafts from July 2nd through August 1st.